We may experience stress from the moment we wake up and with everything happening, we don't always get a chance to switch off. So in this video, we're going to have a look at some simple things that you can do to reduce stress in your life. Ahoy, Bryson Peter here from Brighter Training, where we aim to support growth and development through a combination of positive disruption and bespoke training programs. So because stress is so prevalent, we reached out to a number of our friends and clients and we simply asked them, what are some of the things that they're doing to overcome stress? So we'll start off by just quickly defining what it is and why we feel stress, and then we'll go through some of those suggestions that came through. Excellent. So first of all, what is stress? Bryce, when you're dealing with clients, what are some of the words that they use to describe the feeling of stress? Yeah, look, some people, um, they're describing it as being burnt out, uh, feeling angry, depressed irritable mm -hmm. those kinds of things yeah so i hear very similar things anxious uh, overwhelmed so essentially stress is that fight or flight response uh, in the caveman days we of course needed it to literally survive but in the modern age there are so many different situations coming up that trigger that fight or flight response but we don't always take the time to switch that off and that's really where the problem's coming up and it's important to recognize that it is cumulative so it does build up so stress isn't all that bad, is it? Well, it's not. There's two different types of stress. There's distress, which is what most people associate with stress. That's things like accidents, workloads, health issues, uh, relationship conflict, or financial problems. Okay. So secondly, there's something called eustress, which literally means positive stress. Uh, graduating school or doing a course, getting married, it's a positive stress. All the fun things. <laughs> um, even being on a committee or a project. And positive stress is really good. It motivates you. It, it propels you forward to try and achieve things. Um, I guess for me, it's not just the event, though. It's the duration. Okay. So I guess the real question then becomes, why do we stress out? And that really comes down to two main reasons. So first of all, we perceive a situation as being dangerous, difficult, or painful. Uh, or secondly, we just perceive that we don't have the resources to cope with the situation. So the interesting thing about stress is it begins with our own perception of things. And that, that's exactly right. And it really is, that perception is really unique to each person. So if you think of three different people who all sat in an exam and all got really bad marks, mm. one of them is probably bound to get over it and not think twice. Another person yeah, might worry about it for yeah, a little bit of time, work through it, move on. And there may be a third person where they lose sleep over it. It's probably me. Lose sleep over it, vows to study harder, beats themselves up over it. Uh, they've all had exactly the same experience, but of course they're all having different perceptions of it and that's causing different levels of stress. And it really just comes down to the fact that different situations mean different things to different people. So yeah, look, that makes sense. Now let's have a look at some of the suggestions that came through. So the first suggestion that came through is just seeking external support. Uh, speaking to friends, family, a teacher or a counsellor, just speaking to someone and getting it off your chest or getting it out of your own head can really make a difference just to relieving a lot of stress. Uh, when we seek someone outside the situation as well, uh, they can help navigate us through our feelings and, uh, and, and the situation that we're in. Uh, and most counsellors and psychologists have also got tools and frameworks that you can use in order to label things and put things in perspective so they can really provide a practical way of dealing with stress. Also consider reaching out beyond your social circle, especially if the stress is longer term. Um, if you had a physical ailment, you'd have no issue going to a doctor. And I think with mental health, we are getting better. But if you've got a, a feeling of stress, which is just persistent, you're feeling constantly angry or irritable, you've got damaging behaviors, uh, maybe abusing food, drugs, alcohol, you've experienced a trauma or a loss, or just the stress is causing you, uh, distress and nothing you're doing is fixing it, then it's really important to reach out to people who can help. Uh, there's some websites here from the government, Beyond Blue, so a lot of different resources where you can go, but I absolutely urge you if those feelings are just persistent or causing concern, then please reach out to someone professionally. So another suggestion that came through is simply to change your attitude. Um, and by that, what they meant was talk positively to yourself. Remember that you can handle any situation that you're in. Uh, think about times where you've handled similar stresses or similar situations in the past uh, and learn from that. Reflect on times where you've managed those situations as well. Take comfort, confidence in the fact that you do have the skills and the experience. 
Also as part of that, just practice acceptance. Um, we, we need to accept things that we can't change, accept that we're doing the best we can in any given situation. And what I also like to do is think about what stressed me out five years ago. Uh, and consider whether, I mean, I can't even remember what I was stressing about five years ago. So any situation you're currently in, just reflect on in the grand scheme of things, is it going to still be a problem in five years time? And in her book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, Susan Jeffers has this really, really good piece of advice, which goes something like, think about the worst case scenario you can imagine. And it's unlikely to happen because it's literally the worst case scenario. Um, and then ask yourself, would I survive? And if the answer is yes, then once again, in the grand scheme of things, there's probably nothing you really need to be that stressed out about. Be realistic. One really interesting quote I heard recently was, just because you can do anything, doesn't mean you should do everything. So setting our expectations or goals really high, it may seem like a great idea at the time. However, it can also be a way of causing additional stress and ongoing disappointment for ourselves. Ultimately, find the courage to recognise your limits. The next tip that came through was get organised and take charge. Being disorganised can lead to further frustrations and stress. Plan your time, set a schedule and establish your priorities. So a simple trick you can try at home, just to feel a little bit more in control, is to set an alarm every morning. Get up and make your bed. It's one easy goal that you can do every single day which can help lead on to the next. Do this regularly until it becomes a productive habit. Basically, take responsibility for your life, problem solve, and look for solutions rather than worry. So the next tip is to take breaks and give yourself some me time. Learn that taking time for yourself for rejuvenation and relaxation is extremely important. And it's just as important as any other activity that you may have in your life. At a minimum, take short breaks during a busy day. So you might want to actually schedule some time in your calendar to take personal breaks. One thing that I do is I like to get out of the apartment every day and go for a walk and get out in nature. I find it really relaxing. And learn what your red flags are and take the time to really find out how to manage those and what to do with them. So another tip that came through from people was learn to say no. Uh, learn to pick and choose the things that you will say yes to and the things that you will not. And it's really important to be able to protect yourself and your own energy by not taking on every single request that comes your way. It is absolutely okay to uh, decline a request or a favour. Saying no doesn't make you bad, it doesn't make you self-centred or uncaring. Uh, you need to learn those skills of assertiveness so that you can be more confident uh, and just be more effective in general. I mean, people don't feel bad asking for things, so you certainly shouldn't feel bad by saying no. And there's often a little metaphor that people use which is about you know, filling your own glass and then overflowing to others but if you keep on giving and giving to everyone else then there's nothing left for you and that's really what I'm encouraging here. So another suggestion that came through is to take good care of yourself. Uh, should be common sense but normally it's when we tend to feel stressed that we tend to eat poorly, we sleep less, we stop exercising so we really let go of focusing on ourselves and our own well-being uh, and it's one of the worst things you can do when you're trying to manage stress. Now this can tax the immune system and it can help cause us to become more ill in general. So what we want to make sure we do is take better care of ourselves to begin with so that we're better prepared to manage stress in the future. So it's really a bit of a cycle. So eat properly, get regular rest, get some exercise, keep a routine, allow yourself to do something fun, something that you actually enjoy every single day. Uh, it's paradoxically, it's when we are stressed and we need to take more care of ourselves that we tend to let go of that. So while we're on the theme of looking after yourself, the next tip that came through was learn to relax. Uh, develop a regular relaxation routine. You can try yoga, meditation, just some simple quiet time, do something new. But really just, it's about giving yourself permission to stop. So if your idea of relaxation is pulling out the Xbox and playing games, then absolutely do that, that is fine. But anything you're gonna do, whether it's pulling out a book, playing games, going for a walk, the important thing is don't feel guilty doing it. If it's meant to be to help you manage your stress, then doing something you enjoy but feeling bad about it does not help the situation. So give yourself permission to have fun. Give yourself permission to take a break and relax and try different things that might help out. The next tip that came in was get regular exercise. There's actually been numerous studies showing the benefits of exercise both on stress and depression. Uh, it's also just great for overall health and well-being. Exercise can also build confidence, self-esteem and help improve your self-image. 
It's also a great way to take time for yourself, release tension and blow off some steam. Next, slow down. Know your limits. Cut down on the number of things that you do every day, especially if you don't have time for them or yourself. Be realistic about the things that you can achieve every day. Monitor your pace. Racing through things can really lead to poor performance. Make sure you take the time to do a good job. Because we all know that poorly done jobs can lead to additional stress. Another great tip that came through is to get a hobby or do something different. So often work can become really stressful when things outside of it are out of balance or are lacking. So try finding a, uh, a random activity that you can do. We like to jump onto the What's On website in Melbourne, uh, just randomly picking an activity that you haven't done before, uh, or pick a town on a map and just drive to it and go and explore. Just something different or explore a new hobby just to give your life a bit more balance. Another great tip that came through from people is to just laugh or use humour. Uh, do something funny, see a funny movie, go see a comedy show, even just hanging out and laughing with friends or reading a humorous book. One of the final tips that came through was a really interesting one and it was step back and review your world. So if there's something missing in your personal life, uh, and are you attempting to fill that with work? So if you are finding yourself stressed out at work a lot, uh, often the problem can be that we don't have balance. Maybe we've let go of friends, hobbies, relationships, and just investing in ourselves outside of that. So trying to find a solution at work to fill a hole caused by something else that's missing just isn't gonna work for you. So set boundaries, invest in things outside of work, and both your mental health and your overall productivity will benefit from that. So we hope that this gives you a bit more of a better understanding around stress and a few tips on how you can manage it or how you can help other people manage it. So this forms part of a much larger program around personality types and how they interact. So for information on that program or any of the other programs that we offer, please reach out to us at any time. Our contact information can be found on our website and those details are listed in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I really do hope you have a stress-free day.